Welcome back guys. So this week I am painting the Lord Ordinator from issue 51 of the uh, Mortal Realms magazine and you can check the review out for that issue up in the top right hand corner here. So uh, obviously as usual I've gone ahead and primed this in grey primer and um, now applying a few coats of Incubi Darkness uh, thin down um, as always so obviously I'm painting him in the style of my Celestial Vindicators um, because he is a bit more of a character model um, as far as I know you sort of field them on their own or in small groups I'm painting him to a little bit more than just tabletop ready standard um, so obviously this video is going to be a little bit longer and I'm going to do uh, multiple stages with it so uh, first of all like I said Get all the Incubi Darkness on, get that nice and uh, a nice opaque coat on all of the armour and we'll jump back in just a bit. Alright, so once the uh, Incubi Darkness is done, I will now go in with some Sotek Green and apply this to, I'd say, about 75% of the areas covered with the uh, Thinking by darkness so obviously anywhere that is um, pretty much exposed openly um, to light so as you can see on the knee guard here that's the the bottom um, part of the kneecap plate as well as the top sort of two-thirds of the kneecap plate leaving the uh, sort of that bottom area um, with the incubi darkness and obviously I will go around the whole model doing this the same with this um, so obviously the inside leg leave a little bit darker um, on this area that I'm painting just here right up against where you've got those two sort of rivets there and the uh, the join then becomes vertical for the shin I'll leave a small area of incubi darkness and uh, obviously the same with the edges as these feet plates overlap um, not too much armor on this guy it's pretty much his legs um, his hands and a little bit around his neck and uh, sort of his ribcage area so I'll get on with that and uh, get you guys in a flesh so with the uh, Sotek green all on I'm now taking some Abaddon black and applying this to obviously any area that is uh, going to be black but also any area that is metal so whether that's gold iron um, you know in cases of other models brass and things like that I always um, undercoat them areas with black as I said before it gives a better foundation for metallics to show up on um, rather than what white or grey tends to do um, especially with golds so in terms of black obviously it's the inside of his robe as well as the trim around the diamond pattern parts of the robe his um, sort of cowl at the back of him and the small chest piece at the front as well as his as his belt and on his hands he's got these um, sort of the, the typical um, storm host gauntlets um, but what I've done is painted the back of the hand and the fingers in the Sotek green and then the glove part that covers the forearms um, in black just to make them stand out and make it look like he's got this sort of black leather piece over the top of the uh, the gauntlets and then obviously gold areas or things like his shoulder pauldron um, the disc thing behind his head um, silver areas like the top of the hammer and uh, things like that so again I'll go on a good few coats of this on as always the paint is thinned uh, a few cases are a little bit too thin so I do thicken it up a little bit um, but yeah so a couple of coats and we'll be right back okay so next up very quickly um, just painting the handles for his two hammers as well as the handle on the little tool that's on the back of him in some corn red um, just so that it stands out a little bit more to the red of the robes that I'll be doing. And then moving on to the diamond checkered uh, 
robe here. I'm just doing this with some Mephiston Red, obviously, as always, thin down, get it into those uh, those gaps between, and uh, get a good even, couple of even coats on there, and a nice good opaque red. Um, I notice on the back here that I missed the handle that I mentioned painting a bit ago. Um, obviously, I noticed that as I'm doing this and think, oh, no, that, that's got to be the other colour. So uh, I do go back in and touch that up with the... Uh, the corn red. So, anyway, I'll get on with this and catch you guys in a bit. And next, I'm just using some Kislev flesh here to uh, paint in the skin tones. Um, obviously, he's got the the skin showing of his arms, so I'm getting in with them. And although I show painting the face at the end of this video. Um, I would have painted it during this stage obviously um, the colour is going to be the same as the flesh tone done here so you know do it separate now, I did leave the face to last um, just so I can make sure that I've got it recorded right um, for showing you guys but if you're following along then uh, you can go ahead and paint in the face here or again do it at the end the same as I have and then obviously glue that into place right so focusing on the uh, the diamond pattern here now um, now this is something I haven't really focused on too much um, in previous videos obviously we only get a few models that have this um, on them um, but all I'm doing is using some um, evil sun's scarlet I'm painting the top three so the left top and right of each of these um sort of these diamond pieces so each one individually not going into the grooves between them obviously trying to avoid that and uh just painting like i say left top right and in some cases obviously just uh, top and right depending on um, the direction that the light source is coming from um, with it coming from the left hand side of the model as i usually do my models on the back of him the light source is obviously coming going to be coming from the right a little bit and obviously i do this on um, almost every individual diamond both back and front being mindful of where my light source is coming um, but the main part here is just to make sure that you leave that bottom one um, with the mephiston red the reason being is your light source is coming from above so your bottom diamond should be or your bottom triangle that makes up the four-sided diamond or pyramid whatever you want to call it um, should always be the darker one so i'll get on with this uh, obviously get each of these little pyramids done and then we'll come back in a bit okay so next up obviously this model um, in particular has two white areas that's the shoulder pauldron here as normal and then the kneecap on the same um, side so here's right kneecap um, now for this I'm using Corax white um, I was using um, my older white I can't uh, ceramite white um, which is a pure white because I liked the way that that went down um, but I'm actually starting to see why Games Workshop uh, got rid of that and went for the Corax white instead um, because obviously it's got that slight grey to it it works good as both a white mid-tone and then obviously you would use the white sky over the top so you need a slightly grey or white as your base um, so that you can then highlight it with a white um, obviously the downside is that you then need to either use quite a bit more uh, white scar if you are going just pure white over something or you would have to lay down a base of this first and then cover this with pure white just because of how thin uh, white scar is compared to um, this one uh, but anyway yep that's the uh, the reason I'm using Corvax white on this now um, and you know most of my models going forward um, on top of that obviously ceramite white I'm gonna run out of that pot and probably not be able to get another pot of it so I may as well just start switching and use the ceramite white for you know highlights and things like that 
Okay, so moving on to the gold now. Um, I'm using Retributor armor for this as always. And obviously I'm going for a uh, true metallic type look. Um, obviously I'm not doing it to perfection. It's still a tabletop model. It's going to be used for gaming. Um, so it's not going to be perfect, but it is going to, I do want him to stand out a little bit more than, um, you know, your rank and file infantry models. So just put a little bit more detail into things like the golds and the silvers you know the metallics rather than just a uh, a gold and then a wash and then a highlight so obviously you're going to go around all the gold areas on this um, quite a few of these so I won't name them all off um, but you'll be able to see from the uh, the finished model what exactly those parts are but I'll get on with that and then we'll come back ready for the next step And with the gold done, I'm now going over all of the silver areas. So obviously, that's things like the, um, the heads of the hammers, minus the little uh, bolt bit that you can see there that I've done in gold. I wanted just a little bit of contrast in the hammer. Um, the tools on the back of his um, robe uh, that are hanging off his belt there as well as the beads that uh, link his shoulder pauldron to those little clockwork pieces that he has on his chest. So obviously go around, make sure that this goes on nice and neat, a couple of thin layers so you don't get br uh, brush marks and uh, back in a bit. Right so back to highlighting the blacks now. I'm taking some Mechanicus Standard Grey, um, slightly thinned down, and I'm just edge highlighting uh, the black areas such as the belt, um, his sort of hood piece that he has at the back, and the little piece at the front, as well as the um, the trimming on the uh, the robe, and also this area that you can see here. Obviously, it's catching a bit of light, so I've thinned the grey down just a little bit more and um, I'm applying that just a couple of very thin coats just to um, tint that black a little bit more towards the grey and then obviously I'll let this dry and uh, carry on with the rest and then very quickly just a, a small amount of Ushapti bone just for that little piece of scroll that he has on the side of his hip here. Um, obviously make sure that comes out nice and solid, uh, both front and back. Let it dry and then we can move on to all of the recess shading. So now that the models, base colours and uh, basic highlights have been done, I'm now going in with a number of shades. Um, first off is the Karaberg Crimson and obviously I'm applying this to all of the red areas. Um, so that's all of the front and back of the, uh, the robes as well as the handles on the tool on the back and his uh, hammers. Obviously the idea of this is that it's going to set into those recesses and darken those up as well as that spot of Mephiston red that was left on each pyramid and it will also um, sort of make the um, the Evil Sun Scarlet stand out just a little bit. Um, obviously this is um, the middle stage of the model. Um, after this we'll go back through and uh, do highlighting areas and such. But uh, for now we're just going to concentrate on doing all the shades. I do do all of these at once. Um, like I say as long as you're not touching shade to shade um, at least when they're not heavily contrasting colors then you can get them you know on there at once if you are confident enough if not let them dry um, but what I've started doing is getting all my base colors down um, as I have shown so far and then go back in with all the washes and apply all my shades so that I can then wait one set of 15 minutes rather than four or five or however many uh, shades I've got. 
Okay, so the next shade is some Reichland Flesh Shade. And obviously I'm gonna get this on all of the skin tone areas. Get this nice, you know, quite a little bit on this. Uh, let it get right into those recesses and pull up a little bit, get some of that shading in there. Um, obviously concentrate it a little bit around the underside of the arm, a little bit more than the top. But I am gonna come back in and, uh, you know, repaint anyway. Next up is some Seraph and Sapia all over the uh, this little scroll piece here. Make sure that it sets into the uh, the engraved or the engraving, and then just a little bit on the back there. Nothing major. Nice, quick, and easy. Moving on to the golds now. Um, I'm taking some Agrax Earth Shade and uh, applying this quite liberally into all those gold areas. Obviously, making sure it pulls up a little bit, not too much. Um, but you know a little bit into the uh, those deeper grooves and recesses and uh, Along the shoulder pad here. I try to place it a little bit more into the um, The corners and sort of the bottom area uh, Let it sort of sit around there a little bit more Obviously go over just leave a little bit on each of the gold areas uh, Give it a nice Nice run over the emblem here um, again, let that settle down into recesses and uh, you know it will leave the uh, the top portions alone but it will stain it a little bit uh, which is you know what I want yeah and I will now run some non oil obviously over all of the silver areas and also those black areas just to uh, tie in some of that uh, Mechanica standard grey back into the black a little bit but obviously with the metallic the silver areas let that pull up in a, a few places especially on those sort of hard edges the steps and things like that uh, you know where um, metal overlaps um, but I don't want obviously any heavy pooling on flat areas as that gives a bit more of a, a stained metal look and that's not what I'm going for Right, so this next bit is a little bit more of an experiment. Um, obviously the Agrax Earthshade hasn't had time to dry yet, but what I'm doing here is running over those sort of same areas with some Reichland Flesh Shade Gloss. Um, the reason being is obviously it has that slight reddish tint to it um, that the Agrax doesn't. It's also got the gloss to it that the Agrax doesn't. Um, but I find that using this on its own tends to leave a bit of a gummy look on the gold areas when it pulls too much um, compared to the Agrax. So I thought I would try and sort of mix the two on the model um, and see what happens. Um, doesn't quite give the finish I was hoping for, um, or at least not as much of the finish that I was hoping for. Um, I think next time I may try a pre-mix of the two um, in a small dish and then apply that otherwise failing that I may go ahead and buy some Agrax gloss if they do it I think they do and uh, try that and finally for the shades I'm just taking some Coelia green shade as it has that sort of greeny turquoise uh, shade to it and running this all over the Sotec green areas um, letting it sit obviously in those recesses and grooves um, Letting it obviously sit in some of those areas um, like under the thigh where it will be a little bit darker and Then just sort of painting it into a few areas where I want it concentrated a little bit more just to give some definition in um, sort of the structure of the armor obviously once this is done this will be the last of the shades and then I'll leave this for about 15 to 20 minutes um, I do believe I actually leave this overnight and then come back to this next day but typically I would leave it 15 to 20 minutes and then uh, come back to it ready for the next stages so for me it will be the following day for you guys it will be a flash Okay, so coming back uh, next day, obviously my uh, wet palette has dried out a little bit, so I'm having to add a little bit of water to some of my paints. Um, but I'm now going with Retributor Armor, 
and all I'm going to be doing for uh, the next few steps is going back over with the same um, sort of mid-tone colours to highlight those edges um, or those areas that the shade will have darkened down a little bit. So obviously at the minute, Retributor Armour going over all of the edges, um, sort of like the top of the kneecap as you saw there, as well as the uh, the base of it, and then leave that line of uh, darkened shade um, in there. And then things like the shoulder pol uh, pauldron, um, obviously I'll do edge highlighting all the way around with this. And then on the areas that are a little bit more raised up, um, sort of as it comes away from the corner and curves back up into like a mount, um, dome here, um, I'll paint this and leave just a small line um, along that lip um, that's up against the white. And then with the, uh, the lion on the other side, I will pretty much pick out all of the raised edges um, and then on the left side of some pieces, I'll go slightly down um, into that uh, sort of incline um, towards that recess, um, just to give off a bit of a highlight there that will then gradually turn into the, the shade at the bottom. Okay, so next up, I'm taking some administratum grey and I'm just putting the brush across my thumb there with the paint on it to try and get the uh, the point thin. Um, the paint does dry a little bit too quick on this, so I will go back in, uh, moisten up my bristles, and uh, try it again. So you can see here, just trying to pull down um, just from the points, about a quarter, maybe a third of the way into the uh, the glove. And I'll do this obviously on all the points that are most exposed. Um, so anything that's sort of parallel to the ground um, or slightly vertical towards the uh, the left side, and that will give me my highlights on all of the black areas. So that's the gloves, the belt, and the trimming and uh, things like that. Okay, so next up I'm taking some Ariman Blue and I'm going to use this as an edge highlight um, all around the, obviously, the Sotec green areas. Now obviously I've gone in with the Sotec green already, um, slightly thinned down and just gone back over some of those areas um, that the wash stained, um, just to bring that back up to the Sotec green a little bit more. And now I'm just edge highlighting with the Ariman Blue. Okay, for this next bit, keep it very simple, just using some Wraith Bone. I'm just going to edge highlight the um, this little bit of scroll here. Um, the way that the Seraphine Sapia stains this, I do like the colour that it ends up leaving. And so I like to just edge highlight rather than going back over with uh, the Shakti bone. So just picking off underneath some of the letters um, to make them a bit more 3D. And that is that done. So moving on to some Stormhost silver now. Um, I'm going around and edge highlighting all of the silver areas. Um, again, I have gone back in and touched up the um, the iron breaker a little bit um, you know just where I wanted a bit more of an iron breaker look and obviously you've then got the dark recesses from the null oil and now this edge highlighting um, I also go around all of the golds with this uh, Stormhost silver and just pick off some very fine edge highlights of where the light um, will, or where I feel the light would reflect the most, um, just to make it stand a little bit brighter. Like I say, I'm not going for a true, true metallic metal. Um, it's just more the impression of one um, where you get a few extra highlights rather than really trying to build up a metallic look using metals. So you'll see here um, things like the very edge of the pauldron, um, sort of the sharper peaks, 
um, and ridges and you know just a few areas like that and obviously I only do this on the front side where the light is most going to catch okay so moving back to the robe now and back to the uh, Evil Sun Scarlet I'm going over all of the diamonds um, or at least the majority of the ones towards the center of the robes so leaving sort of like the outside columns um, as they are and I'm trying to pick off um, the X shape that is made from the uh, the edges of each of the um, the triangles where each triangle meets each other obviously you get this raised edge that comes to a point um, and what I'm doing is like I say I'm lining this um, as thin as I can on the vertical part but the horizontal so the piece that goes across I'm actually doing it a little bit thicker so that it catches the top sort of left and right um, of those pyramids um, you know those triangles so that there's a little bit more highlight on the top and then you get this thinner edge highlight that goes down the um, the vertical line I hope that makes sense if not I'll leave this running for a bit so you can, uh, you can see what I'm doing so you'll notice that a couple of times or you know I'm, I'm doing a couple of strokes downwards you know two maybe three what I'm doing I'm not actually touching the model there I'm coming down and as I come back up I move forward slightly and I'm getting it so that I am just coming in and touching the model rather than just jabbing it and hoping and you know doing a, a line down I could end up too close and then do a thick line so when I'm doing it I am actually only applying um, one line um, but I may be making the line motion a few times that's just so I can move inch myself forwards and make sure that I touch the model how I want to touch it and not you know too much Right, and once the Evil Sun's Scarlet is done, I'll now come back in with some Wild Rider Red and just do the top half and the horizontal line um, on the sort of the outer um, diamonds and then the ones right down the center or at the peak of a fold as that, that fold comes up and then starts to dip down the other side. I'll then do it um, all the way down and all the way across. Um, what this is going to do is give that per depth perception um, that you know you've got this crease or wrinkle that goes in and then comes back up, catches the light, and then folds over back to the other side and then back down. And obviously, it will then get darker in there. So I'm just being mindful of where I think that that light would catch the most on this and where it would get the um, give more of a 3D look. I know the object is obviously 3D, but it, we use the paints to stop it from being flat. So you can see here, obviously, the right hand side of this side is where the light is going to be coming from um, because it's from his right hand side the left side as we look at him um, from the front so it will be the right hand side here and then obviously the more I go round to the left side um, the less I'll do these they'll just stand out a little bit and finally for the robes I've just mixed in a small amount of white scar with the wild rider red um, just to lighten it up again just a little bit more um, but trying to avoid it from being um, too brightly pink and um, obviously again I'm just picking out where I think the sort of those very most highlights are going to be
Okay, and finally for the uh, the armor itself, I've mixed in a small amount of white scar with the Ariman blue, just to get a little bit of a nice blue. Um, I probably on high sight should have done it with the Sotek green, um, as obviously they need to be a bit more of a turquoise and a blue, but it's not too bad, it does come out pretty well. Um, and again, just like the armor, uh, the gold areas, I'm just picking off some very edge highlight points where I want that brightest shine to be. Um, so obviously straight down the, uh, the foot of the plate there, um, sort of a small area of this curve, the, uh, the bottom here, and um, you know, top of the kneecap, um, sort of in the center area. And obviously that bit there, I'm just adding sort of a spot highlight. So uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and do that on the, uh, the few little armor pieces that need it and then we'll be back. Okay, so now taking some of that white scar, I'm just going back over the pauldrons here, leaving a small um, area around the, um, the edge where it meets the gold, and obviously the white scar is just the highlight on top of the, uh, the Corvax white there. But again, a couple of thin coats, um, white does tend to show up brush marks the easiest, so keep them thin, um, and you know, apply it nice, nicely until you get a nice, even brush mark free coat. Okay, so I'm now taking some Kislev flesh and going back over the arms here, um, just picking off some of the highlight areas where the light would hit. Um, again, the Reichland flesh shade tends to um, stain the arms or the skin quite nice, um, but it you know it gives it a nice warm tone um, so all I'm doing is just highlighting the top areas leaving the recesses darkest where it's set and then that underarm area will have a little bit more of a slightly sort of paler pink tone compared to the uh, the recessed areas And with that, the body is now finished up. So I'm now moving on to the head, and you can see here, just like it recommended in the um, the issue that this came with, I've clipped off the sprue around it and left it on the sprue. Um, this makes holding this much easier for painting. So again, um, just like the flesh on the arms, I'm taking some of the uh, Kislev flesh and I'm just applying this all over the head, um, except for the um, the back of his neck. He's got obviously that small area that is going to be part of his under armor or um, tunic or whatever. Um, so that area just there um, will be painted black. Um, but for the rest of the head, although I'm doing the hair a different color, it's better to just get a nice, um, even coat throughout. Obviously this is thinned down slightly so that I don't clog up any details. Um, and yeah, let this dry and then we can move on. Okay, so for his beard and hair, I wanted to go for a um, a bit of a an aging look to him. Um, but although sort of giving him a blonde brownish kind of look, so for this, I'm applying some XV88 um, with a size one brush. And what I'm doing is I'm not going for a complete smooth coverage. Um, I'm almost like I'm brushing in clumps of hair. So I'll um, sort of take into account where the, you know, the area of head that I'm doing and sort of pull my brush downwards um, in a way that I feel he would have this brushed. So the sides um, sort of tend to be brushed back and down towards the back of the head a little bit. The back of the head obviously would be brushed down and the top of the head, he's got a sort of a sweeping side part. Um, so obviously from that side part in, the hair would come over and across. 
so as you can see here I'm just doing the uh, the side bits um, obviously as that becomes the side burns the direction is going to change and they're going to become a little bit more downward um, and then as we come towards the back of the head here they are going to curve and come down as well Now the reason I'm doing it in small strokes is some of the paint is going to overlap a little bit on some of that drier area and darken it up and it would also leave a few very fine gaps um, which will show the flesh tone um, underneath it again just adding some depth to the hair okay so for the face I'm just taking some Reichland flesh shade and I'm not so much um, you know splashing this on as more placing it um, obviously flatter areas such as the forehead I don't want um, a huge stain on there um, and I want it concentrated in more areas such as around the hairline um, inside of the mouth either side of the nose um, in sort of the cheek pits um, obviously you've got the cheekbone then you've got that little dip that goes in um, you know just areas like that um, and obviously sort of he's got this sort of furrowed brow so I just concentrate a little bit in there um, basically just place it carefully and make sure it sets where you want it or where I want it then next up I'll be using some Agrax Earthshade for the beard and hair now obviously this is a little bit stronger than the Reichland Flesh Shade a little bit more brownish um, so with the beard he does have some texture modelled in on there so obviously I want it to sink into that and also into his parting but the rest of the hair I want to use this a little more like a glaze um, and have it just sort of stain the hair a little bit and what it will do it will tint the colours of the hair a little bit more towards the, um, the brown side And obviously I'll leave all this to dry for about 10 minutes uh, 10 to 15 minutes and then I can come back and start highlighting okay so now that the shades have dried I'm taking some Bane Blade Brown and a size 0 brush and in very much the same way I did with the XV88 I'm just brushing in um, sort of not strands of hair but groupings of strands um, again like I said before the idea of this is to give the impression of some graying um, over the top and obviously some highlights and it just breaks up the hair and makes it look like he has a bit more head of hair rather than a, uh, a flat um, Lego hairstyle um, it's the only way I could put it if you were to just paint a solid colour. Okay, so I have skipped me doing the eyes as to be honest, they are quite embarrassing. I am terrible at doing eyes. Um, but what I've gone in for the skin tone is obviously I've gone back in with um, the Kislev Flesh and just put in some highlight areas of, of that and then I've taken some pallid witch flesh and just along the lining of the lip a couple of spots on the chin um, and the brow top of the cheek things like that I've added in some fine highlights um, just to make it stand out a little bit for the back here um, I start painting this with the uh, incubi darkness and then decide nope it's going to be uh, like an under uniform um, like a um, sort of a bodysuit or something and so I actually go back in and do all of this in black um, in pretty much the same way I did the black on the body armor um, the tongue I do with just a small amount of the wild rider red mixed with the uh, pallid witch flesh um, more pallid witch flesh than the uh, the wild rider just to get a very pale pink tongue tone um, and I've put that in there and then just a small amount of uh, the Corvax white to line in some teeth 
Um, other than that, once I've done the uh, the black here, um, I will then obviously snip off the head, glue it into place, and catch you guys back to take a look at the uh, the finished piece. Okay, and here he is, guys, the finished Lord Ordinator. Um, obviously, I haven't done his base yet. As I've mentioned in previous videos, I'm still debating on what to do exactly for all of my um, Stormhost army. Um, or whatever the army they're called. Um, so, yeah, I'm still undecided, but I am thinking of going with the uh, green, green Stuff World Rollers. Um so I may end up doing them but for now I'm just leaving the bases as they are um, but apart from that obviously the model himself is finished he is super glued down so I can just snap him off the base easily um, and then re reapply him once I actually decide on a base um, but as always guys thank you ever so much for joining me it has been a pleasure painting this model I hope you enjoyed the video if you did please hit that like button down below if you're not already subscribed then please consider hitting that subscribe button for more mortal realms painting goodness as well as upcoming 40k um, imperium stuff and any other videos i decide to do in the future if you are ha if you have subscribed then welcome to the channel thank you for your support and um until next time guys take it easy and keep painting those minis.